you could live a really big life at 20 hours a week as an ISA if you were able to make that contact rate. You know, you could make a six figure income and be home with your kids. Hi, Adam. Thanks for joining me today. Hi, Gary. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So tell us about your business today. We did about 200 million last year, and I think we'll, we'll surpass that a little bit this year. We're crushing lead gen, you know, and it's, it's very monotonous and it's pretty boring. Um, but, you know, we, we're all very specific about the contact rate that we have to have on a day and a week. And I hold everybody accountable to that. And, you know, those conversations lead to contracts. You know, there's nothing sexy about it. On, on our team, everybody has a contact rate that they have okay. to meet, right? Okay, what does that mean? It's 40 contacts a day, you know, oh. so you stay late to make your contacts and you agree to do that. And I've got a very, very accountable team and it's never an issue. 40 seemed to kind of be a magic number where we could still grow. Um, they could still get a really healthy income as an ISA. And so that's the number we've stuck with. But, you know, on our morning call this morning, we were talking about what would it look like to do 60 a day? You could live a really big life at 20 hours a week as an ISA if you were able to make that contact rate. You know, you could make a six figure income and be home with your kids. If if you're willing to play the game of hitting, of hitting your contacts. But the great thing about Legion, and Gary, it's their choice. Right. They can decide if they want to do more or do less, you know, just more conversations with more people. The yeah. conversations aren't hard. They're easy. Well, let's talk about that. So so I, I have my contact rate a day that I have to hit. Mm -hmm. What are uh, walk me through the main ways I'm going to hit that? So what's that call like? So um, if you're calling me and I'm a sphere past client, what's the, what's that conversation? It is so simple. It's almost embarrassing, but Hey Gary, it's Adam Grady. How are you? I'm, I'm good, Adam. How are you? Gary, you just, your name crossed uh, my desk and I just wanted to call and say hi and check on you. Oh, thanks. How's everything going? Good. Good, good. good. You know, can you believe you've been in your house two years? No, two years. Wow. I know. Right. Anything you guys need? Any work around the house need to be done? Any resources I could help you get? Uh, no, not that. No, that I think of. Thank you, though. Really, really simple, Gary, right? Just, just coming right. from contribution every time. And sometimes when I'm asking how they're doing, we go right into talking about work or kids. And then they're asking me, how's the market? I bet you're so busy right now. And uh -huh. I'm like, I am really busy. Why do you ask? Right? And put it back on them. Well, we've been thinking about this. You know, and it just ultimately leads to a conversation of, you know, my aunt passed away and we're thinking about putting her house on the market. You know, they're just, they're simple conversations. I think now a question, now question, if I don't have enough past clients or enough sphere in my database, mm -hmm. now how am I going to hit my contact number? Add sphere to your database, right? So get out your check ledger. Who are you writing checks to, Gary? Who already considers you their client? So why are you not readopting them as your client? Right. Right. I don't care if it's the barista at Starbucks. Her name's Sarah. She smiles at you every time you're through there. Put, add her to your database. Who's your insurance agent? Who's your mechanic? Right. Who's your veterinarian? Like call so, on those people that already consider you their customer. Do you find that um, coming from contribution makes this job fun and easier? And easier. Easier is the key. It makes it really simple, Gary. You know, and oftentimes... It's not a real estate conversation at all. And I'm giving them a, a referral to a veterinarian or to a florist or something, you know, or to a landscaper, right? But that gives me an excuse for a follow-up call. How'd the landscaper do? Just want to make sure you showed up and everything was okay. You know, I it just gives that. me a reason to go touch them again. So the other thing that I know you're crushing is giving back. Um, walk us through that. So we're either closing down the office as a team once a month and we're going into an organization and volunteering together, which again, we get so much back from, right? It just, it makes us so touch tighter as a team, you know, to go out and have those experiences outside the office. And maybe somebody, you know, the interesting part for me is maybe somebody in the office that's not as outgoing, right? Or perceived not to be, but then I put them in that environment and they show up as the leader. You know, it's really interesting to see when we get out yes. and we start working with people, how people show up differently. Do you start out with a goal? Uh, is there sort of an annual goal or any way that you think about giving or is it? Yeah, we, so we would celebrate getting to a hundred threshold by going and doing a big project. 
And so instead of bonusing everybody, we were using that money to go donate to somebody or participate in a project offsite. Okay. You know, okay. and that's the way we celebrated 200 units, 300 units, 400 units throughout the year. Ah, give me an example, just a quick one. Sure. So um, we just went on one that's uh, the company is they've got these bins and parking lots, Gary, where you can go donate your clothes and shoes, uh-huh. but it all needs to be organized. And then they sell it by the pound and all the money goes to the Big Brothers Big Sisters local organization. So it, it keeps all the stuff out of the landfill and all the money stays local, which is really important to us. Right. So yeah. they just need people to volunteer and organize all the stuff. So we went to a warehouse and we opened up all these trash bags full of people's discarded material. And we, you know, we tied the shoes together with the laces. So they were together and we folded the shirts and we did all that and, and sent it off to be processed. Other than the joy um, that it gives you and your team, how does that translate into business back to your business in some way? How does it find its way back? So we do a really good job of promoting it. It's not just another house posted on social media. You know, it's us, it's showing our personality as a team. This is who we are, right? And it gets us this really great following. How do you show your personality as a team? We show our personality by saying, hey, we got 200 units. We were able to help 200 families locally. And now we're going to go out and celebrate by doing this community service project. The same thing that you post in social media, do you incorporate that into direct mail, email, yeah, we, we do. We do an email newsletter. We don't do really any direct mail. Voice to voice is our business. Why is that? We have most success with it. And honestly, Gary, um, when I started out, I didn't have a budget. I didn't have any money. And so I <laughs> built the whole business on free, right? Phone calls are free. It didn't cost me anything. And so that's the foundation I laid in the beginning and it just continued to build off of it. You know, 18 years later, it's still successful for us. I love that. Um, the my experience in the real estate space is that most people spend their time trying to avoid making contact Mm -hmm. and they look for ways that they don't have to do it. Mm -hmm. Right. Which by the way, is going to every, it's going to drive your cost up dramatically when you try to avoid contact. We have a 40 contact per day metric for seven ISAs. So it's 1400 local real estate conversations we're having a week. It's great data. What people forget is that rising interest rates, um, uh, which means uh, potentially people are going to buy less. All that does is cyclically go around and drive up uh, rent rates. Well, Gary, in 18 years, I've really never been in a rising interest rate market. It's never Mm -hmm. happened to me before. So I was nervous about it. And now I'm coming to find like not a whole lot's changing. Right. Uh, no, you just have to talk to more people. You have to find more people because sure. they're the that's right, because there are less there are less people transacting. Mm-hmm. But this idea that people aren't transacting, you know, the way, yes. the way I thought about it, because I, I, you know, I got I started my career in 79. Interest rates went to over 17 percent. Hard to imagine. Right. Yeah. But but I hit all my financial goals. I did. I did. But you have to talk to more people. You have to be very purposeful by who you talk to. All right, Adam, this has been awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. Hey, if you want to learn more, just check out these other videos.